Welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're talking about letting go of being the perfect teacher. To have compassion for your inner teacher, you have to let go of being the perfect teacher. And a really, really healthy self-focus in doing this is to ask yourself after every session, class or private or semi-private, how can, can you improve? How could you do a bit better? Even, and most importantly, if that ses session ended with lots of success, you were happy, the client was happy, it's still important to dive down into your work and to really ask yourself, well, what could have been different? What could I have done more of or instead of to improve the um, experience for my client? And what I like to do is uh, keep journal entries on the group classes that I teach on a regular basis and also the clients that I teach on a regular basis and really ponder how could I have done something better. Another thing that I love to do is to be a student myself. I take classes all the time from really different teachers, different studios. Every city I go to, I try to go to a, a studio and take from a teacher. And I also do teacher training a lot. And I really like, and I do my journal, journal entries about this too, I, um, I write down and I record what I really like that a teacher did. It could be choreography, but most of the time it's how they um, started a class, the theme that they thread, thread through the class, how they answered questions, um, how compassionate they were, how articulate they were, uh, how they, they ended a class, and how they made uh, the, the students in the class, or if I'm taking a private, how they made me feel valued and important and that that was my time and that was my time to be nurtured. So, and then on the other hand, of course, taking so many classes, I also take some classes from teachers that, um, and I, I pick up things that I don't want to do. And that's really important too. Um, and what I really notice when I start to look back on these journal entries is I'm not really writing a lot about mm, I need to do new, new choreography or I need to have new props or I need to make my clients sweat more. That's not what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing in my notes and what the, makes the, the most um, important changes are things like when I come to the studio, I leave my baggage, my emotional baggage outside because this is a time for my clients. And actually when I do that, the twist is that it's more therapeutic for me because I get that time to just focus on someone else. So I leave my baggage outside. Um, I'm also thinking about being more compassionate and uh, that I'm listening a lot more with my ears and my eyes and not being so fast to just start cueing, not having so much of an agenda, but really taking the cues from my clients. Again, listening to them more with my ears and my eyes before I just start cueing choreography. Now, what are some real-time tips that you can do in the studio? How can you make this happen? How can you um, start to let go of being the perfect teacher, right? And, and really start to create a more comfortable environment for yourself where your clients can thrive. Number one is try to start to remember the names of your clients in your group classes and of course your privates. This is really simple to do and it's one of the, the best ways just to make clients feel more comfortable, feel recognized and valued. Another thing that you can do is start to record, you know, in your journal or in your contact logs in the computer, something that happened in that session, something that 
you're working on with the client, something wonderful that, that happened in the, the session, or something that they might have uh, told you about personally. And to remember that and to bring it up in the next session. Again, that makes the client really feel recognized and valued. You can also, at the beginning of a session, beginning of a class, always ask the clients how their body's feeling today. Get a, you know, a few minutes of where, where are you at right now before we start? And then really try to listen to them and incorporate those things somehow into the session and into the class. One of the most important things that I think that we all need to do, this is the most important out of this whole list, is to be kind and not to be too serious. How many times have, you know, each of us, we've gone to a massage therapist and that therapist has said, this is the tightest neck I've ever felt, or this foot is the tightest foot I've ever felt, or you've gone to a movement class or a movement session and the teacher says, oh, you can't even move your pelvis. What's, what's wrong with your shoulder? <laughs> well, that's no good. That kind of talk is no good for the body. It, what it does is that you walk backwards, right? And what we wanna try to encourage as movement therapists with our clients is that we wanna encourage that self-healing element of the body to start to, to turn on. And if we use negative talk, and if we're always using the words, and I'd really like to get rid of these words during a session, if we get rid of the words no and never, then that's gonna go a long way. So we have to really pay attention to how we use our words and how we talk to the clients. Again, the focus should be to be kind and not to be too serious. So smile more, laugh more, use humor, be constructive in how you're helping the client to change their body. The last thing is to stay on task, please. This is the client's time. So the focus is not on you, it's not on whatever else is going on in the studio, it's on the client. You have this precious little time with them. So do your job well and with honor. Karen wrote in on the forum. Recently, many people are getting infertility treatment and in vitro fertilization. How are you careful to teach them in a session? Are there points we should pay attention to? Could you let me know, please? So for women who are getting uh, in vitro uh, fertilization, low impact exercise is what's recommended. So high impact exercise, it, um, has the risk of creating something that's called ovarian torsion, where the ovaries twist in on themselves. So definitely low impact exercise. And good thing about Pilates, it's low impact. So that's the first thing we have going for us. Um, a lot of these women, if they're doing in vitro or um, they have a treatment for infertility, they're going to be on lots and lots of medication, they're going to be having headaches, bloating, breast tenderness, um, the pelvic organs, the bladder, everything is just going to not feel so good. So you have to be aware of that in a session and you might have to do a lot more therapeutic Pilates than usual with these women. I also like to treat my clients who are going through this type of treatment like they're a first trimester pregnant woman. Because they're getting these treatments all the time, um, they're giving the message to their body that they're pregnant, and at any moment, you know, they, they could be pregnant. So we want to treat them like a first trimester pregnant woman. We want to concentrate on our core intelligent principles. So you want to concentrate on core activation, breathing and how breathing affects the body in all different types of positions. You also want to look at joint mobility and also very gently starting to strengthen and stabilize around joints. And, but that means subtle body movement. That's it for today. 
If you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning. Thank you.